let's look at something called neutralization. But first, before we do that, go ahead and pause the video and try to do this in your notebook. Try to group a bunch of these things together. To group these words into as many categories or as few categories as you can to see which ones are kind of similar. And then we'll talk about it uh, in class. So go ahead and pause right now. And then now I'm going to move on to looking at neutralization. So neutralization, if you can guess kind of from this term here, neutralization sounds like we're trying to make something neutral. So if you remember the pH scale, it goes from numbers uh, 0 up to 14. Neutral is right in the middle, and we predict that water would be neutral. Okay, So water should be at the level of pH 7. So I, I know a few things. I know that if I test it with universal indicator solution that that often gives me a green color. If something is green, then that tells me we're going to be neutral. So uh, acids and alkalis can neutralize each other. So if it's 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 almost like mixing colors. If you have a substance that's really strong, strongly acidic, and I mix something in that's really alkaline, just at the right level, I might be able to neutralize something. And we can use this to our advantage here uh, with various types of things like factories produce a lot of acidic materials that go into the atmosphere and that can actually cause a lot of pollution and even acid rain but if I know if I understand how neutralization works maybe I can do something to those gases like pass them through something that's really alkaline and then maybe I can neutralize it to lessen the effect or the damage on the atmosphere okay so take a look at that example that we just mentioned here here are some other daily uses of neutralization. Okay, they will. Some are pretty neat. Some are pretty gross. So beware of disgusting pictures coming up here. Um, one thing that people used to do. Now you can probably figure out with other types of ways. Bee stings and wasp stings can be treated with. Uh, depending on if you're a bee or a a wasp, your stings can either be acidic or can be alkaline. And so you can try to neutralize that to try to. Uh, reduce the effect of the actual sting, which is pretty clever home remedy for some of these things. But don't go doing that. People used to do this all the time, but uh, you can you know check with your parents first before something like that happens. Uh, another thing that is common is uh, farmers can actually treat their soil. And these let me explain these diagrams here. A substance called lime can be added to a soil that has been acidified by acid rain. So you've seen uh, pictures of forests or plants getting destroyed by acidic rain, particularly if they're picking up acidic gases from nearby factories or something like that. So we add something called lime. Now this this is super confusing. You're going to see it's called lime, but it's not the fruit lime, and it's not even acidic because you might be thinking, well, limes, limes are acidic, right? But the substance is actually alkaline. It's, a, it's just something that farmers add to their soil to reduce the effects of the acid. So they're actually adding alkali into the soil to make it more neutral. Some plants won't grow if it's too acidic. And that's, that's not good if you're a farmer, you're trying to uh, plant food, make money, or if you're just trying to feed people. So that can be an issue as well too. One more fantastic one, or two more actually. Um, when you have a stomach ache, Oftentimes, it's because of excess acid that has been built up in the stomach, right? So you're producing a lot of extra acid. So guess what? A lot of these stomach medications that you take, they're actually called antacids. That sounds like anti-acid or going against the acid. And guess what works as an anti-acid? It turns out it's alkaline substances. So inside here, you'll find a lot of things. like I happen to know a few of the names like magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide. Those are all very typical alkalis that are used in medications for neutralization. One more thing, your teeth need to be brushed every now and then. Think about the last time you brushed your teeth. That paste, that stuff, and you shouldn't be eating that stuff, by the way, that you're putting on your teeth is actually helping to neutralize some of the acids that are in your mouth that have been produced by bacteria. So bacteria can leave, uh, okay, ugh. bacteria can do all kinds of nasty stuff to your mouth. If you don't get rid of them, one of their byproducts is they produce some acid, which can make your mouth more acidic than it needs to be, and that acid can actually damage your teeth. So uh, most toothpastes have alkaline substances in them to help you neutralize that part. So that is a great way to uh, remind yourself to brush your teeth, 
Just keep looking at that picture for the next five minutes. So some daily uses of neutralization. In the next video, we're going to be learning about mathematically and scientifically how I can actually see when exactly neutralization is happening. And there's some neat experiments that we'll be working on.